Welcome to the Homebrew Z80 project part 5. In this part I'm going to talk to you about the progress I've made. I know it's been a long time, um, I've been troubleshooting and just completing the wiring and things uh, and I've been busy with my A levels. Uh, and I'm also going to ask you guys for some help because I'm stuck at the moment and I need someone who's more experienced to give me a bit of guidance as to how I should move forward with this. So let's jump right into it. The, the board is now complete. Uh, I'm in a troubleshooting phase where I just need to change little bits each time, but all the wiring is done. All the data bus and the address bus lines have been wired. I've added in this LED up here um, to basically show me when address zero uh, is high, and that way it kind of acts as a status LED so I can actually see if the CPU is actually doing anything or not at all. Uh, and then obviously we've got our data LEDs down here as well. Uh, these are connected up to data pins 0 through 4. So I can just see part of the data bus and again it just shows me if it's actually doing anything at all and if what it's doing looks remotely correct. The serial communications chip has also been added. Uh, this is the 6850 ACIA. Yeah, if you want to go at speeds higher than the 4 megahertz that this is running at, then you'll need the 6850, uh, the 68B50 ACIA, because that can go up to speeds of 8 megahertz, whereas this can only go up to speeds of 4, as far as I know. Okay, so that's the new things that have been added and completed. Uh, the only other things to mention are the capacitors here, these little blue boxes here, and these capacitors. Um, I've added these for uh, stability within the system uh, so that the power running to the Z80 is very clean and there's no fl little fluctuation uh, as that can cause issues so hopefully uh, these capacitors have solved that issue. Um, these are I think these are one microfarad, these little blue ones, and these are 100 microfarads. So I've got 100 microfarad on the Z80, and then I've got one microfarad on the RAM, the ROM, and the communications chip. I'm not sure if those are exactly the right values, um, but, you know, that's what um, I had, and that's what seemed about right from what I've seen online. Um, and I've also got one up here just on the whole system, just connected directly across the power input pins. And that just basically tries to stabilize the power rails up here running so that, you know, everything has a little bit more of a stable supply. And the one other thing is actually the manual clock and reset uh, buttons just down here. Uh, you can't see those quite so well if I move this wire out of the way you can see this the reset button down there um, uh, and they just help me to troubleshoot the clock is currently disconnected uh, as this uh, clock circuitry up here is now working but the reset is still connected and I can just manually trigger that uh, and reset the CPU uh, and that way when I, it does it is finally working um, it will actually communicate properly with uh, the terminal on the computer so, what are the problems, or what have been the problems, and what have I currently solved and looked at, and where am I stuck? Well, the first time I tested this, uh, I literally got nothing out of the LEDs uh, at all. We're now at a point where the system does actually, the LEDs, the data bus LEDs, and the uh, address bus LED do actually light up, uh, and it looks as though it's actually starting to process things. However, when running on the manual clock, I can clock it a few times and then it almost seems to hang up. So that's uh, slightly confusing to me. I'm not, not sure exactly what's going on there. This is the first time I've ever hand wired a computer like this. Uh, so I'm all new to troubleshooting this kind of a system. But yeah, when I first tested it, nothing um, 
even came on. Um, I later discovered that I had the reset wired incorrectly. The um, capacitor on the schematic between these two resistors here was actually completely incorrect. They just need to be connected and there needs to be capacitors down to ground over here. Um, which I may actually need to add at a later date. Um, I haven't added that, so I may try that actually. Um, although, to me, I don't. I think the clock signal's okay. Um, I don't have an oscilloscope to test it, um, but the CPU seems to clock fine for a while, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what's going on. Um, I also had some of the other control pins incorrectly connected up, uh, such as the right pins. They weren't actually connected to the RAM or the ROM properly, so uh, nothing was going to happen there. But we're now at a stage where things seem to be getting very close to fully working. Um, at the moment, I'm running off the 500 milliamp 5 volt power supply, uh, power that just comes straight through the USB the serial cable over here and that's just connected up to these power rails at the top um, and that's fairly clean power I can actually run it off my little bench power supply as well um, if I require that much current that's one thing I'm unsure about is to exactly how much current I require to run this sort of thing um, but I think 500 milliamps should be enough um, so I'll take you over to the computer now and show you exactly what's going on and what happens. Um, before we do, there seems to be some kind of an issue around this chip here. When you connect it up to the terminal, you get garbled data coming through. So it is sending something and the CPU does seem to be processing something. The issue is if I press down on this chip, uh, there seems to be kind of a bad connection it makes me wonder whether I've got something a slightly loose connection however I've continuity checked every connection uh, on the board through using the schematic and everything is fine so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there I might be triggering the reset of the system I really don't know but I do get garbled data out of this so I'm unsure I've actually also checked the connection between these pins and the actual tracks below the board because as you can see this is on like a little plug-in board it's on headers uh, that way I can swap it out if I need to uh, and make this semi modular when this works the plan is to actually rewire a whole new board in a different layout that actually has almost like a card edge connector at the bottom but with header pins and that way I can just plug it in and then have a back plane so I can connect this up to different stuff possibly to an art using an Arduino to connect it up to real time clocks and things like that but that's a step we'll get to when this system is actually working and I've messed about with it a bit I want to use this mainly for messing about with assembly and basic and possibly other programming that I can use just with the raw Z80 so we'll go over to the computer and see exactly what's going on. Okay, so we're over at the computer here. Um, I'm just opening up a putty terminal with the correct parameters for uh, the Z80 down here. So um, it has, according to Grant Seal's website, we have RTS slash CTS flow control on hardware flow control one stop bit eight data bits board um, I'm keeping low he's using double the clock speed that I am uh, but at the moment I'm just keeping it at 9600 parity non and my particular connection is on COM3 If I open that, as you can see, the system is on. And nothing is coming up on the screen there. Even when I try and press the reset button, nothing's happening. If I, you see, it's very glitchy. Look, it's just reset itself there again. 
and now we're back into a kind of almost hung up state. However, can you see there if I apply pressure to the ACIA chip and then reset that seems to almost bring it to life somewhat. Although I'm not sure, we're still getting no output. I was getting garbled data before, now I'm not. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. So I really don't know, I'm stuck. Um, as you can see, it's almost somewhat stable when we get it in that position. If I just press the reset button, you can see they're lit up and they go down and that LED there goes off so it looks as though it does reset properly but I'm not getting any data out or garbled data when it is coming through um, and basically the system doesn't seem to boot correctly at all I've checked the data on the ROM that's still okay as far as to my knowledge all the chips are okay and I have been through and checked the connections um, I'll go through and check them again at some point when I've got time but if you guys have any suggestions it's a very ambiguous question to be honest because I have little details as to what exactly might be going on this may be an obvious answer as well though I don't really know I have no experience but as you can see that's now reliably responding to the reset button. However, it just doesn't seem to be doing anything meaningful whatsoever. If I repower it, I'll reset the power. See now it's almost flipped back into that original state where it's now not responding to the reset. And we still get no data. So, I'm really not sure your help would be much appreciated on this one. But the board is looking good, the wiring's complete, and I'm making progress. This is better than before, as we weren't getting anything before, so we are at least to get some, getting something out of it, even if it's not that helpful. Uh, so please comment any suggestions below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.